नमस्कार दर्शक मित्रों स्वागत है आपका दिव्यांग न्यूज चैनल के एक मुलाकात कार्यक्रम में आज हमारे साथ एक विशेष दंपति यहाँ पर बैठे हुए हैं उनके बारे में कुछ आपसे बात करेंगे कुछ अंग्रेजी में उनसे पूछेंगे कुछ सवालत फिर बाद में जरूर लगे तो हम आपको हिंदी में भी समझाएंगे तो मैं बात कर रहा हूँ कि हमारे साथ एम ए बुशेट और जॉन सैंडमेंड जो मूल ब्रिस्बेन ऑस्ट्रेलिया से है और आज हमारा ये सौभाग्य है कि आज ये यहाँ इंडिया आए और हमारे स्टूडियो में आकर हमसे मुलाकात की तो मुलाकात के इस कार्यक्रम में उनसे काफ़ी सवाल हम करेंगे समझेंगे कि वो किस पर्पज से इंडिया में यहाँ पर हैं और क्या काम करते हैं और क्या उनकी भावनाएं हैं और किन लोगों से वो जुड़े हुए हैं और सूरत कैसे पहुँचे इसके बारे में हम विस्तार से उनसे बात करें तो एम एंड जॉन वेलकम टू स्टूडियो फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन मैम You came to our institution. You mm -hmm. are sitting beside me. And we are interacting. First, let the audience know how you came to India, how you landed up in Surat. Mm -hmm. What was that connection which you had lost so many years back, and the story, mm -hmm. and how you reactivated that after a lot of research. Okay, so my husband and I just arrived in Surat maybe three hours ago. And uh, we came primarily to reconnect with old friends that I first encountered, met here in Gujarat on the How train. How many years back? Twenty years ago. Twenty. Years. Near twenty years ago, nineteen years. So on that occasion, I happened to be travelling alone, and um, unbeknownst to me, it was the Holi festival was fast approaching, and so the trains were full. Um, I ended up travelling in a third class carriage, wooden seats, um, I was out of my element and some situations occurred on the train that made me feel uncomfortable um, and I was helped, assisted, saved by a man named Ram Jaju who took me under his wing and insisted that I come and stay with his family. Um, he learned uh, from me that I had already travelled in India for approximately four months. Um, he heard me talk about my experiences and he exclaimed that everything that I'd experienced um, was indeed a, you know, a great uh, experience about India, but one thing I had not, not yet done was live with an Indian family. So he invited me to stay with his family and at the time it felt like a big risk to go home with a stranger that I just met on the train but there was something that um, enabled me to trust him and I was very relieved to see his three sons and his wife standing <laughs> outside the compound ready to welcome me. So uh, we had a situation where we spent a week together um, they were very kind to me. They invited me to another family wedding in Rajasthan, um, which I travelled to approximately four to six weeks later. And I turned up in just one gar and uh, made my way to their house. I think they were surprised I turned up, <laughs> but I turned up and um, again enjoyed their hospitality for a, a few days over the wedding um, and as I said goodbye and got on the uh, local bus to Pushka it wasn't till I arrived that I realized I had lost my diary. Oh. I'd left the diary somewhere at the wedding. I had no idea where but most importantly it meant that I had no way of knowing how to connect with the family that had been so kind to me. So for a number of years I carried that feeling of guilt. So that, that, would, that must have been a great shock to you when you realized that you lost the diary. Absolutely, yes. You suddenly you bonded with some people and suddenly you disconnected. Yeah, there was, uh, mostly it was a feeling of what if they don't understand that I lost the diary? Absolutely. What if they think I just ignored them? What if they think it didn't mean enough to me that I would write and say thank you? The resentments. They were the, they were the feelings. So, years and years mm. later. Then you uh, uh, went back, flew back? 
I went back to Australia, I resumed a life, um, I relocated, I went back to college, I was doing some postgraduate study at university, and out of the blue I get a phone call from somebody in Sydney saying, I have your book. Oh, wow. What book? What are you talking <laughs> about? I don't have a book. <laughs> Yo, mom, this is, you are Miss Amy from Australia, like, I have your book. It took some time to realize that he was talking about the diary, and he had the diary. And I said, please send it to me, send it to me, I'm in Darwin. And he said, no, you must come and get it. I'm in Sydney, here's the restaurant name, you come and get it. So, I got the diary. And in the diary, that there, was, there were no addresses, there was no email, there was no phone number, there was nothing that I had written that I could connect to the family. Oh my God, what happened to that pages? Somebody tore it off? I don't think I ever wrote down the oh. actual address in Ahmedabad. I wrote down the names. I wrote down the address in Jaswanga, I wrote down other people's addresses, but for some reason I had completely overlooked writing down um, the Jaju household address in Ahmedabad. And anyway, I've just learned that they moved two months later from <laughs> that house <laughs> Even anyway. Even if you had that, you wouldn't be able They to moved to Surat. So now here I am almost 20 years then later. Then what happened? You, you got that book and then again it became an, another mystery. Another mystery um, and one that has taken many many years to finally unfurl and now we have a situation where I'm living in Chennai in Tamil Nadu. I'm working at an American international school and when I first arrived all the memories of India came flooding back and I realized that I had to get back in contact with the family. So we traveled home one year for Christmas. Our whole house is packed up but I went digging in through the boxes, unpacking, looking for the diaries. I found the diaries, I take them back to India, I open it up and I realize it's the wrong month. It's the wrong diary. So maybe a year later we go back for Christmas again and I say, okay, we have to look again. Then I find the right diary. I bring it back to Chennai and I'm looking again. Still, there's no address here. There's no phone number. I'm starting to use Google, looking up Jaju, Ram, like Ashish. <laughs> like, <laughs> how do I find this family? Correct. And uh, there's a lot of jajus <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> in yes, India. Yes, yes. Um, and I was looking in Ahmedabad, uh, which they're no longer there. And I think it was two months ago, I got the diary out again and I was going through. Flipping the pages. And a calling card, business card fell out for fuel services. and. I must have seen it before, but I never Realized. connected it with the family. So fuel services, I looked at it again and I saw in handwritten ballpoint pen the name Ram Jaju. And I went crazy. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I've had this card the whole time. But the phone numbers don't work because they only have six digits, it's 20 years ago. So I Google the company and then eventually I see the name connected and I see an email address and I send an email. And the same day I had a phone call from the eldest son, Ashish, who had been looking after me many, many years ago. So we have just arrived off the plane from Chennai to, to say thank you to this family who looked after us. This is also our Thanksgiving weekend, so this is our Indian Thanksgiving. This is our Wonderful. way of that was a giving very thanks. Very beautiful and touching story. Mm. Mm. Something about you, John. How are you and Amy connected? 
Well, uh, we met in Brisbane. How many years ago? Oh, we, we met five, about five years ago. Six. We're in our sixth year now. So. <laughs> and I'd have to say that um, I'd never met anyone like her. And she's a remarkable woman. She's travelled, well-travelled. And um, the... I think we had been thinking about, at some stage, travelling to India and certainly we were looking at job opportunities and Amy told me the story of her travels and in particular this, this incredible uh, story about a, an amazing family. And so I think in, in the back of both our minds it, it was always there that if we managed to get to India and if we managed to pull things together uh, we might be able to catch up with this incredible family and uh, it's taken three years of us being here to to try and put the jigsaw back together again <laughs> and here we are it's quite remarkable so we're very lucky you two are in Chennai and working yes. both of you along what exactly you do? Um, I'm working at the American International School Chennai, so I am a an English language specialist. I work in the high school with students for whom English is not their first language. So I've always had a great interest in cross-cultural relationships um, and you've probably worked out I've done a lot of travel. Um, and working with students um, for whom English is not their first language, working with students from other cultures um, is really one of my great passions. Um, I've worked with um, adult migrants, I've worked with indigenous teenagers in Australia, I'm now working with um, Korean, Japanese, um, South American students who whose families have uprooted from their home countries and um, started work in India, Chennai. So for a lot of these students, they have done all their schooling up until now in their home country, in their home language. And now they're in this completely foreign, not only a foreign country, but also a foreign schooling experience. The American style of schooling is very different to um, a Korean or Japanese style uh, school. Even a French education system is really quite different to an American style mm -hmm. education where your uh, learning is collaborative, where you are building understanding through lots of discussion and debate. Um, and so for uh, the students I work with, it's about fast tracking academic levels of English so that they can be successful in their mainstream academic classes. Mm, so building confidence very quickly. I work across the whole high school. I work in the science classes, in physics, in chemistry, in biology. I also work in the social studies classes, in the language arts classrooms. I work with teachers. Um, so in many ways my position is very specialised within the school. John has a different role. How, how, how have you associated? Um, well initially when I arrived in Chennai um, as Amy's husband, I had no connection with the school. Um, I managed to start working there um, on a voluntary basis <coughs> as a swim coach for, uh, a, for about a year. I was doing that while I was in negotiations with an Indian company. So then I started working for an Indian company, uh, Zoho, as a marketing coach, and I did that for a year and a half. That then finished, and the school basically stepped in and said, well, would you like to come along and work for us as an associate teacher and work in elementary PE? So now I'm running around with grade three to fives, in a gymnasium, teaching them games, and uh, working as an associate teacher. And I'm probably as shocked as the children are, but there you go. <laughs> <laughs> what do you enjoy? I do, I do enjoy it. And it's, it's quite 
an incredible opportunity to have uh, to step into a teaching role like this is remarkable, particularly with no formal teaching qualification. So I'm very fortunate. Excellent. Both of you have been avid travelers. Mm. Not only to India, I think around the globe. Uh, yeah, I certainly have traveled pretty extensively. Um, we travel a lot for work. Um, we were in the United States last year for professional development. We travel to Bangkok a lot, uh, Thailand. Um, we've been to Jordan um, oh, wow. a lot of time in Europe. We spent last summer in Turkey and Greece. Um, we've both spent a lot of time in uh, Southeast Asia and, and through Europe, um, some parts of North Africa. What um, is that uh, which attracts you to come to India frequently? India. You aside your connection with Ram. Yes. I think for me, India is one of those places that it gets under your skin. Um, it, it shocks you and inspires you and everything in between. Um, I feel like India is not really a place, it's an experience. Absolutely. The cultural diversity we have. The cultural diversity, yeah. again, just keeps making what might be banal really interesting. Just, um, you know, walking down the street in the different states of India is a different experience wherever you go. Um, I love the way that India has layer upon layer upon layer um, and even in Chennai after living there for three and a half years and driving down the same street we notice something new every time something we didn't notice before maybe the a certain time of day or night and a certain light is on that you didn't know turned on and then you can see in through doorway upon doorway and there's all these inner sanctums it's like an onion just go on peeling it peeling off. it until <laughs> And, and it never ends. <laughs> there's, there's just more. Which is the uh, best place you would like to visit quite often in India? Um, I think for me, Rajasthan is always the quintessential India. It, uh, it's always offered up. Uh, the food is spectacular, the culture, the scenery. I think the landscape it's something to do with the dust and the desert, but it I, maybe there's a connection with Central Australia. We have a very red yes. kind of heart. Maybe that's the connection. The uh, architecture is is spectacular. I love the shapes. Um, I love the fine, intricate. Um, you know the the way you can make stone look delicate you know it's it's amazing so i think i that think rajasthan a, that, that is gives a, place. a very special bonding with mother earth yes mm. it's definitely landscape for me i mean people are wonderful food is fantastic i love culture but i think it's the landscape of rajasthan that that keeps me going back there thank you for all that information we, you have come today to this institution to our channel which is connected to an institution which deals with children with uh, physically challenged. You have been around, you have seen the place, you have visited each and every department. What message do you carry? How do you feel? Well I think that we both first remarked mm. upon the fact that what we feel is a very positive energy radiating um, from the classrooms, from the students themselves. Um, just when we arrived in the car there was music playing and students were practicing for a special performance that is happening early December and there were smiles on those faces that I don't think I've ever seen bigger smiles from a bunch of kids and there they were spinning pirouettes in wheelchairs and balancing up on um, high points, you know, between the the wheels and the whole thing choreographed 
and I mean that was just quite remarkable. Um, so there, the first thing that we noticed, I think John will also talk about. The Have you ever interacted with such children, disadvantaged children, any time before prior to coming here? Um, I have, yes. We, um, back in Australia, we have a program called Seahorses, which is uh, run by the local surf lifesaving club. So I was a surf lifesaver uh, for about 10 years, and we would bring uh, children with uh, both mental and physical disorders. They would be brought to the beach, and we'd take them through games on the on the beach, and 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 th for those kids that were able to, we'd get them sort of playing in the water and interacting with the ocean. And that was very special for two reasons. One was it gave the children an opportunity to interact outside their normal school and outside their home and to be at a beach, which is, there's a very big beach culture in Australia. The second one was though, uh, to give the parents, to see the parents who could relax. They, for the first time probably in the whole week that they have their children, can pass them over to us and we would look after them for an hour and an hour and a half. And just to see those parents have the opportunity to relax was fantastic. And uh, so yes, uh, I've been very fortunate in, in that experience. As passionate explorers, what is the passion still in your heart to do in the upcoming future? <laughs> well, I think for me, um, we both have a great love of the water. Um, I have had to give up diving. Um, um, and what I would really love to do is um, spend more time learning to sail and do some sailing. Um. And how about you, mm. John? Um, I think a part of me, I, I, there are places that I've been to that, um, that I would love to go, go back to with a, and take Amy. For example, South Lebanon. I worked in South Lebanon many years ago. And sadly, I'd love to take it to Syria, but that won't, won't be, there won't be an opportunity for that um, at the moment. Currently it's not in a shape to it's, be there. <laughs> no, and I, I worked there for six months and so I know a lot of the towns and cities that they talk about in the news today right. about what's happening. But I think f for, for me traveling is having the opportunity to experience different cultures, different peoples and different um, environments with someone who can appreciate it with you and you know, that makes all the difference that really makes all the difference you should say you make the difference <laughs> <laughs> so uh, john and emma it was wonderful speaking to you mm -hmm. thank you very much before for we us. depart and part for the time being a small mm -hmm. message from you to all of us all the indians mm -hmm. um well I think what I would say is um, a big thank you to India because um, I feel like th now we're at this um, long weekend, it's Thanksgiving and I feel like India has given me so much understanding of, um, of others and of myself as well. I've learnt so much about myself from India. And I feel that um, coming here today to Surat and seeing the work that people are doing, understanding that people's passions are driving really good things. Um, and that I think for me, India um, has just got such a big heart. The way that people look after each other and the sense of community that I feel here, I feel like that's something worth hanging on to and valuing and continuing to engender in the, in the next generations. Um, you have something really special here. Thank and you very, uh, very much. And a small message for you. Um, to India, I would say, 
you have an incredible youth in this country. You have some very smart, very talented young people, whether they have disabilities or not, and embrace them, give them the opportunities that they need to be the best they can be. And I think from what I've seen both in the work environment and here, India's got an incredible future ahead of it through its youth. So that's my message. Thank you very much, John and Emmy. So, Dashan Mitro, we have a great opportunity to talk to Emmy and John. We have a lot of work in this moment. We will be able to talk about this in a few moments. We will be able to talk about this in a few moments. Namaskar. Thank you.